This is a product from 1983 Radio Shack. This is a pressure zone microphone. You can see it originally cost $33. And it certainly looks different than other microphones. Catalog 33-1090A. We'll read the back here. so revolutionary this microphone actually imitates the human ear resulting in a clarity that most mi conventional microphones are unable to reproduce the PZM microphone encompasses an entirely new state-of-the-art technique giving your recordings a previously unheard of sound quality the future of microphone technology is here now ideal for use with a moving sound source handles very loud sound sources with minimal distortion levels eliminates the hollow effect caused by conference recordings PZM is a registered trademark of Crown International custom manufactured in Japan for Radio Shack let's look at the contents right inside we have the owner's manual that we're going to take a look at. We have the microphone itself. Very heavy metal plate here. And the electric part is in here and you'll notice there's just a very small area between that and the metal plate. That reflection surface is what creates the, they call this the primary boundary and there's a pressure zone that's created under here that the microphone actually works on. It doesn't work necessarily on sound waves directly. And it comes with a very long cord here. And it has a uh, control switch. This has a AA battery in it right now. That's once again the catalog number. And the control switch is off, on, or standby. And if you put it in standby, you won't hear the little clicky noise uh, when you turn it back on. It has a quarter inch plug. This is going to be mono, so the examples I'm going to make today will have to. Uh, I hate when I have to listen to things through one speaker so we'll use Audacity and at least double the mono track so we can get it out of both speakers. I know some purists might not want that but uh, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, obviously that won't fit in my camcorder directly. It's going to need an adapter. So let's look at the uh, manual here. Pressure zone microphone. You can uh, pause your screen and read that. Copyright 1983. Here's some of the specs. Frequency response 20 to 18,000 hertz, 600 ohms, minus 74 decibels. Battery life 2,000 hours. Battery 1 AA dry cell. Although you can get fancy here and make that 12 volts. And I think we'll probably try that too. It's got a uh, 5 meter cable. It's a quarter inch plug. And it does come with this an accessory. Where is my accessory here? What did I do with my accessory? The windscreen had escaped and fallen on the floor. It would fit like that, and it has some uh, sticky tape you could mount it with. And you can see the schematics here at the bottom. A lot of people might be interested in that. Alright, I'm going to switch now for a minute to the 
PZM microphone itself and record with that. And we'll insert that recording back in in the end. In this section, we're going to use the PZM microphone for a recording rather than the camcorder's two microphones. And later we'll insert this and we'll be able to tell the difference, at least between the camcorder's microphones and the PZM. This section points out that conventional microphones have a problem in that they get the direct sound, but they also get reflected sound at a slightly different time from what they call the primary boundary, something that the sound waves bounce off of. But the PZM microphone has its primary boundary very close. I think it's just a few thousand inches from the microphone. So it actually combines the direct and reflected sound waves immediately and creates a pressure zone between the microphone and the plate which is what it uses to detect pressure differences, not sound wave differences, so it doesn't get that interference. And it has a, uh, what they call a hemisphere pattern over the entire thing from some sound wave, and that's where you should be for your best frequency response. And the plate can be mounted upside down or on floors or anything and it should be able to give just as good a results so that's what they call the how and the why of the pressure zone microphone all right I want to uh, turn that off for a minute and I've noticed in the instructions here mentions you can use two 6 volt batteries instead of a double A so you can get 12 volts in here which will give you greater dynamic range and higher sound pressure no I don't think me just sitting here talking will be affected but I'm still gonna try and do it it says you must remove them when not using the mic alright let's open up the recorder here, the control panel. We've got these two little 6 volt batteries with I guess that's Japanese writing on them. One of these 28 L's looks like all right let's uh, continue on and we'll go back on to the PCM microphone here and continue on with our manual. Alright, we now have our two 6 volt batteries in instead of the 1.5 volt battery. So I'm going to record this part um, on applications with the pressure zone microphone again and we'll hear if the 12 volts sound any different than the one and a half volt. Uh, this section just shows the proper placement of a couple of these PZMs. These are of course mono so you're going to need two for stereo and I'll modify this soundtrack uh, later in Audacity to make sure we don't just hear something out of one speaker. We'll at least make it a double channel mono and shows the placements how far apart for your best performance of the microphone it shows how to place them reinforcing under pianos it's got some under the piano itself and some under the lid 
So it just shows various placements of the pressure zone microphones and it shows placements above a vocal group for best performance, a choir for best performance, it gives various options, mounting on boards, plastic sheets, stage performances, and it does point out that the PZM should be at least 15 feet away from the closest performer. We've got placements here for lecterns where they don't interfere visually between the speaker and the audience showing one placed on a conference table where it's out of the way and people will forget about it maybe. We've got our drum placement here for the mics and you can change the pickup pattern to delete audience noise and things by putting some absorbent um, material over some of the primary boundary plate here and this will provide 20 to 25 decibels attenuation in the blocked direction. So assuming your noise was coming from behind the microphone here you could block that out. Well there that's the instruction manual and some of the performance abilities of the realistic PZM and we're still on the PZM microphone here not the camcorders and I guess we'll just go out with that so this is an interesting little device of course here in my limited resources no music abilities no musical instruments and only one microphone we're not going to get the best indication of how good these are but it's certainly something people who are interested in with musical instruments or things could get and try out. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye.